I'm gonna try the Allagash White. Do you have the uh, Kolsch, the Gaffel Kolsch? I think that all comes out of like Cologne or somewhere weird. Let's do it. <laughs> this is your new book. That's true. You know, the first the first essay has like freaky Portuguese clowns, and mm, then there is um, some like shady furniture dealings, and there's even a bear on the cover. Do you think that's enough to get guys to read this? Oh, right, yeah, the bear. Well, the thing is, the shady furniture dealings, it's funny, I was wondering where that was going. You think that's, that's, kind that's of something like that men under, are into? Yeah, men like kind of like shady. shady if it was like drugs like. and porn, it might be better. I was very uh, conscious with trying to not make it too chicky, because the second you have breasts and a pen, then instantly everyone assumes it's sort of chiclet. So actually the only um, essay I've ever written about like relationships or anything girly is at the end of this book. That's such an amazing look from the bear too. He looks like he's thinking that. How did you get this number? He looks horrified. <laughs> so were you just there in your day job and you just realized all of a sudden you're like, I love writing, that's why I got into this? I locked myself out of two different apartments in the same day while moving, which is Wow, sort of hard feat to do. of stupidity. Yeah. yeah, I sent out an email about it basically, and a friend of the Village Voice was like, "This is a mess, but if you clean it up, it's a good story, and I'll I'll publish it." And so I did, and then you just sort of get addicted to it. And I started writing regularly for the Voice, and that was all always going alongside my day job. Um, yeah, how do you, how do you find all the time to do it? Because I mean, uh, I mean, you know, Ritalin. I'm kidding. Oh, that's great. <laughs> great. Okay, so some drugs. Drugs, mm -hmm. you know. Are you taking notes wedding. when no. you're on these things? You're just remembering no. it later. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not Truman Capote. The dialogue is refashioned. Well, now I'm wondering if all this is fabricated. I've been no, reading, pretty I've real. Been reading this. Preparing. I would fabricate something much better. Really? You know, there would be there would be aliens and murders and crack okay. busts and. So you, um, this is not going to be like James Fry Part Two. Probably don't know this, but I was I was actually his publicist. So. At the time, mm -hmm. I did see. Man, my research sucks. The whole time I was trying to figure out how to pronounce your name, I should have been studying up on this thing. It, it was a really hard, I mean, it was obviously a really hard time for everyone, and I mean, I was also the paperback publicist, uh, so, I mean, the whole thing, just from a sort of civilian perspective, was um, such, a, such a witch hunt. Um, yeah. You were doing personal essays, so... Not at the time. But you are now. Yeah. And so that must have had some sort of impact on you when you are writing these stories, it did. but to have lived through that. I remember Riverhead called me during the first book, and you know, when you're sort of settling the tiny little details of like, you know, let's see, what, what font are the page numbers going to be in, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, silly things like that. And they said, oh, we also, we also have to have you write uh, a disclaimer because of that whole James Fry thing. And I sort of had just, you know, come off that, that crazy hurricane of it. And I sort of laughed and said, yeah, I know it. It's, you know, such a, it was one of the first moments where I had this strange intersection of my day job and the writing job. I would think that, I mean, you have some very attractive photos on the back of your books. Thank you. You look great. And I would Thanks. think that your male readers would probably send you creepy proposals. Uh, there would be maybe some strange dudes that would come out of the woodwork. There was a guy, um, I don't want to give him too much, uh, too many details, too much sort of credence, uh, but from across the country, I will say, uh, was sending me home videos that he thought I might like. Um, on VHS? On VHS. Really? Because honestly, would you expect anything different? So that's been a little bit weird, but um, did you watch mostly the, it's not creepy. Did you watch the VHS tape? Hell yeah. Oh, of course, right? <laughs> of course. So, a uh, question we always ask at the end of these interviews since we've been drinking together is who is your favorite uh, hard-drinking writer? Oh, That's John what? Cheever. Cheever? Cheever. Well, he's from the same neck of the woods that Cheever's you're from. Cheever's from the same neck of the woods. That's how I know he has cause to drink. <laughs>